So, excuse me right now. Um, at this particular point in time, if you're listening on on www.voiceofradio.com, it's hot. It's hot on this May. This is pre Memorial Day. Well, not pre Memorial Day, but pre Memorial, whatever it is. Um, it is May 21st, 2021. And you can call in at 216 772 0500. Last week I had a phone interview with none other than the Democratic um, Congressional District 11 candidate Chantel Brown, who was also the Cuyahoga County Den- Democratic rep. It is kind of cool in this studio. And I, first of all, I got to give a couple of shouts out. Shout out to everybody that's going to prom, having a prom walk. If you're in, if you are. Pretty much if you are a person that's going to prom, um, and especially since last year that there was nothing happening, then shout out to all the seniors that are graduation, graduating the class of 2021. And I got to give a couple of shout outs. First of all, shout out, happy birthday to one of my favorite people, Deanna Moore Taylor. Uh, hope you and Mr. are having a great time on your birthday uh, or just rest and do whatever you like. Second of all, I would like to shout out um, the line dance king, Robert Johnson. Uh, Mr. Robert Johnson received the award for the uh, at the Greatest R&B Legends, Greatest R&B Legends Award on this past Saturday at the Civic over there at Severance. Uh, Severance, uh, the Civic over there in Mayfield Heights and this uh, <clears throat> near Mayfield Heights. So. The Civic Center. So if you were there and saw me there at the Greatest R and B Legend Showcase, what's up, Mary Trevisano? How you doing? Uh, again, you can holler at me at 216-772-0500. This show is sponsored by the Adams Board of Greater Cleveland and also Ohio City Barbecue. It gets it like Ohio City Barbecue tastes so good, man. You want to slap your daddy. I'm not saying mama. Mm-hmm. I changed the commercial. I changed the commercial. So, yeah. All right. First of all, let me get some stuff out the way. Now, we all know that um, I'm just going to talk about this vax million Now, for those of you who don't know about the vax million the vax million is the drawing that Governor Mike DeWine of Ohio sent out. If you were vaccinated by... Uh, by either Moderna, Pfizer, or the Johnson & Johnson, whatever, you know, then you can go get into this drawing. It's www. I guess it's vaccinemillion.com. You can pull it up on Google. Vaccinemillion is this. Vaccinemillion is where you can put in, a draw, put in a drawing for, and I hate to say this like that, you can put in a drawing for a million dollars if you are vaccinated. That means this. You can you can get vaccinated. You can you can have the vac- you can get vaccinated. Um, and I gotta, excuse me. You can get vaccinated, and you can get a chance to win a million dollars. Now, here's the thing. It's only five. You, you, it's only six names are gonna get drawn. Meanwhile, the government. <laughs> Uh, Mike DeWine decides to cut off the federal government funding of the PUA. That was the extra $300 people was getting for filing unemployment to get people back to work because right now everything is going to be opening up June 2nd. And if you're not wearing a mask or if you're, if you're wearing a mask or not wearing a mask, then you can actually um, go in some places without masks like CVS. If you, are, if you don't have to go into a mask anymore with the, at these places, Trader Joe's, Target, CVS, Walmart, major retailers. Now, some people will still require you to wear a mask when you go into certain places. Now, I know people don't like to wear masks or whatever, but it protects the vaccinated people from the non-vaccinated people because we still have people that were not vaccinated. Me, of course, I'm vaccinated. I got the Pfizer. I'm just letting everybody know, and yeah, I got the, the card or whatever. But here's the crazy part. Instead of just giving, like, you, everybody who's vaccinated and not vaccinated, just why are you taking away the PUA that the federal government is giving you here in the state of Ohio? I just don't understand it. 
but you can get into this million dollar drawing. <laughs> By the way, guess the drawing is going to happen if you register now because they open up the floodgates now. Everybody wants to, you know, want to be a millionaire, blah, blah, blah. You have to, even if you were vaccinated, you have to register for it. You have to make, you have to opt into it. So here's the thing. The drawing is going to happen May 26th. I don't know what time it's going to happen, but the, but the drawing is going to happen May 26th. If I win that million, you, you're not going to see me May 26th, 27, 28, 29, 30, I probably won't be on there for a month. <laughs> I'm being honest. No, no, I'm just kidding. But for real, if you are, but you have up until the 26th of May to register. 216-772-0500 is the number to call in. And the thing about it is, is like you can still do the vaccination or whatever. Now, Let's get back to what's going on overseas between Israel and Palestine. This is one of my top things. I don't... Israel has been like our the USA's little brother, and they always get into fights, and they want us to bail them out. I'm actually sick of Israel always doing stuff like this. And the reason why I'm sick of Israel doing stuff like this is because it is. I'm sick and tired of Israel pulling stuff like this because of one thing and one thing only. This doesn't make any sense to fight over religion, land, whatever they're fighting over, a stub toe, and there are children involved. Now, usually I try to stay like the international stuff I try to stay away from. But the thing about it is, is that I saw something that broke my heart. I saw a child, a 10-year-old girl, talking about, I'm just 10. We're children. We, we didn't, they didn't ask for this war. They didn't ask for Israel and, uh, and Palestine to keep fighting and fighting over and over again. But it happened because I don't know what, what, what started it off. We got a whole bunch of stuff over here in America that we need to take care of. We still got systemic racism. We still got other people getting getting shot and killed and by the way you know the everybody's mad about every arrogant american person is mad about the asian bill the asian asian hate crime bill i mean the thing about it is is like we need to form a super PAC to get this stuff going because you know they don't care about us you already know that sometimes he doesn't care about us and the thing about it is that it like well everybody's mad at the asians for getting theirs listen black people black folks our folks we got to get our own stuff in order we got to get our own stuff in order. And the reason why I say we have to get our own stuff in order is because we haven't done it. I mean, the thing about it is you can't, and people are looking at the ridicule that we face in the streets when we shoot and kill each other. And we talk about, and, and every race, and let's back up for a little bit. Every single race shoots and kills each other because you live in your own neighborhood. You know, but but they make an emphasis on black on black crime, which I hate that damn term. I always hated that term, and I will always hate that term because nobody talks about Asian on Asian crime, white on white crime, you know, Latino on Latino crime, you know, the crime against not ordering um, sour cream with your chipotle, that particular reason. But, you know, on seriousness, you can't have all this crazy stuff without giving African-American people you know, what they want with the hate crimes. Usually the problem is, is that the hate crime is coming from the police. That's where the hate crime comes in from. It's from unarmed, like, unarmed black people getting killed by police officers. So hopefully it'll be, it'll, it'll be done. And second of all, when everybody's trying to compare with Biden's first 100 days, listen, when I, when I, I don't, I, the former the former jerk that was in office at this particular point in time. The former jerk in the White House that was in office at this particular point in time didn't do really nothing in his first 100 days except getting protested for. Protested at and things of that nature. Got a couple of emails coming in, a couple of messages coming in, you know, things of that nature. But we still, but, but we have to focus on what we're supposed to be doing as a country, as a people, and in our communities and I hate to say that, but like in our communities, for our families, surrounding our communities. Now, 
if you heard uh, from, if you heard about what happened in, <laughs> bring this up. If you heard about what happened in the um, a couple of articles, you heard that Barack Obama, the 44th president, you know, sometimes he swayed not to criticize number 45, which is Trump. Now, I'm going to share something with you. Um, and this is an email coming up right now in Black uh, America Web. Um, pretty much um, in Black America Web, it said that the, a new book reveals Barack Obama called Trump a lunatic. And a, I'm going to say this, and EP, the show host, is on the ones and twos, so how you want to handle it? Called Bar Barack Obama called Donald Trump a lunatic. And a corrupt motherfucker. <laughs> now, 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 wait a minute. Hold on. He said this to speaking to a board board members. I mean, the thing about it is his scorn for Trump was no secret. Remember, Trump brought off the birth, the birth certificate thing saying that Barack was not born in this country before Trump ran to be president of the United States. So... I mean, he called, he called, he called him a, he called, a, a, like he said, a, during the transition. Now, remember, Obama served his full eight terms, eight years, meaning his two terms was up. So when Trump was elected to office, he didn't beat Obama. Oh, it was just time for Barack to go. Everybody knew that. Well, except for the Trump supporters. It's like, well, he would have beat Barack Obama if we would have ran against Obama. Shut that damn, shut that dumbass bullshit up. Just saying. Just shut that up. He would have, he would have, Trump would have got, the orange one would have got trounced by Obama. And, 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 and everybody knows that the one thing that Trump hates besides losing is losing to a black man. So, yeah. So the transition team, this is where the article gets real, real juicy. The transition team between Trump and Obama is like Obama was showing Trump around and Obama said that Trump did not have any idea what to do with every single thing. And that's what happened. And that's why we and, and why do I bring this situation up back in the past is because one of those things was the pandemic playbook. How to handle a pandemic as president of. Barack Obama had put it in somewhere in the Oval Office giving Trump the ways to handle this coronavirus. Because in 2015, Barack Obama said we need to sign a bill in Congress and the Senate just in case it won't be when we have a war, it will not be by bombs or nuclear. The nukes are coming in. They say, we're saying that back in the 80s. It will be chemical warfare. And one of those things was spreading a disease that could cripple the country. What did COVID-19 do? Yeah. Even though you got a lot of money from the PPP and EDL, whatever the hell, or PUA or uh, uh, stimulus or stimmies or whatever, a lot of stuff was shut down because Trump didn't handle this pandemic the correct way. So for all those people that are mad that the waiters and waitresses are not going to take $4.50 an hour with somebody eating a whole bunch of food and getting a $2 tip and they not coming back to work, you can blame your, you can blame the person that you voted for. Blame the Donald because that play, that pandemic playbook was in the Oval Office and Trump was either too arrogant or too stupid to read it. That's why he, Trump, and he called him in lunatic, crazy, a corrupt mother. All Obama, everybody was like, where was this Barack Obama four years ago when Trump took office? Obama was trying to be cool. But in the book, there's also... There's also a Netflix series that's going to be coming out 
with the, with satire, with realness, with Barack and Michelle Obama, talking about the transition, giving the stuff over to um, the whore and the whoreess, which would be Donna, uh, Donald, and uh, Melania Trump. And I say with kind, of, I, I say the whore and the whoreess with kind of words. They're both whores. They are. There's some horror. Like, 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 yeah. Made me drop my phone. I'm wrong. like made me drop my phone saying that. I mean they are. Like, there's some horrible people. Whole damn family's horrible. And the thing about it is, yes, Mary Trump didn't listen. He doesn't listen unless it's his own voice. Trump will never listen to anybody. Let's just let's just be re real talk. Let's just be real talk about this. Anybody else that's listening, Trump's not going to listen to anybody. But as far as the uh, and, and and the thing is, is that I I told warned people about him five years ago, four or five years ago. Then we had to suffer through this crap. It's like taking a long dump. You just wanted to end. We, we took a four year long the. Trump took a four-year-long dump on all our heads in America while he was president. And people still wanted to vote for him. Y'all, y'all did turn into domestic terrorists to, to, to keep this man in office. Wanted to stop the other, wanted to stop Biden from getting in. Why? What is the appeal? By the way, uh Rudy Giuliani, Trump's former attorney, the one that the guy that he didn't pay, well, a whole bunch of people he didn't pay. Is uh, how can I put it to you like this? As the um, New York State Department, uh, the law enforcement department has seized, I think, thirteen to twenty um, devices, electronic devices, on the recording between him and Trump's conversation. And Trump is they're working on an indictment. Look for an indictment sometime by midsummer against Trump about his taxes. And this is this is not going to be civil. It's going to be criminal. And people are saying, well, why focus on Trump? He's not in office anymore. Why don't you just leave him alone? You think they're going to leave you? you but everybody's talking about, well, that if you got that 20 grand and you want housing, you get that PPP load, then you're going to get indicted. Why shouldn't he be indicted? Why shouldn't he go to jail? Why shouldn't he lose his freedom? He conned a whole bunch of people. Why shouldn't he lose his freedom? I don't know. Why shouldn't he lose his freedom? Weird. Weirdo. Some people are just like, you know, just stop. Stop. Shut the hell up. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Here's the reason why I said it. It's because the simple fact of the matter is, is that, and it's like, you did, like you, we suffered through this for four years. I want to see him go to jail. The orange is the new orange, and I want him to see the word orange in that county jumpsuit. No more slick suits. That you didn't step the back on construction workers that built them gaudy, uh, god awful, ugly ass casinos of yours, which your name lighted up in red and blue lights. Like, if somebody said the Trump Hotel was nice. I, I would probably would never be in there, ever. I sleep on a park bench before I go into a Trump Hotel. I would actually, but but if, if, but. Even if, unless it got two two code, I'd just be like, I'll put me in the lobby. I don't want to go in the room. Because it's probably dirt, nasty, disgusting anyway, just like him. And you, you have no scruples or morals, then the problem is, is that you're dealing with somebody that doesn't care about society or himself. So we're going to go into break right about now. When I come back, I'm going to talk about more of the greatest R&B legends. Speaking of the greatest R&B legends, this is, if you're listening to www.voiceofradio.com, this is Debonise Bird, and she got an award. Shout out to her. Um, shout out to Dennis Cass. It's you. We'll be right back with another edition of Headlines and Headaches. Thank you, Mary. And thank you, Carmen. We'll be right back. So what you think about it? E? Huh? What you think about it? About what? The um um the Legend Awards. It's all right. 